Hi, this is Dave Redder. The purpose of this video is to describe how you can build an API in PHP for the purpose of calling functions against a database and uh, having AJAX uh, retrieve them using jQuery's AJAX so that we can modify what we're showing on a screen. This is the database that we'll be using and it describes a garden. Um, in the main garden, which is 12 feet wide and 32 feet long, I've got it named as main and its ID is number two. That's everything we can say about the main garden. Um, and there's nothing in the main garden except other gardens actually. So the cucumber garden is going to be one that is with ID number three. It's going to be the, the child of garden number two, or in other words, garden number two, which is the main garden, is going to be the, the parent garden or the containing garden. The cucumber garden is six feet wide and four feet long, and it's at position zero, zero within the parent. The sprouts are at position zero, four within the parent, which is parent two. You'll notice that the girls, for some little girls here, to plant little girl kind of stuff is um, garden number four and its parent garden is number six. Garden number six is this unused portion and we're going to have uh, it be six feet wide and four feet long and at position six zero within that. The goal is to be able to manipulate the, the table content through a website, through web pages um, and be able also eventually to draw them, which is not part of, of this, uh, this video. So with that in mind, I've got this web page that I can use to insert a new garden. And the idea is that what I want to do is to allow the user to type in some of these things, but I also don't want the user to type in some other things. In particular, when the user types in uh, if the user could type in the parent ID, you'd have to know what numbers numbers to use to do that. So you maybe have to display a list of these guys, of, of, the, of the parent gardens, or potential parent gardens, or whatever. But I don't want to do that, because all I want to do is to be able to pick a garden from the list of existing gardens to be the parent for the new garden. And I want to pick it by name. So the goal is, first of all, to be able to create a drop down or a select box that lists all of the existing gardens that I can pick and that will allow us then to go get the ID that goes with that garden. So if I choose to use unused as the parent garden for something it's going to put a six in that spot when we do the insert. So <clears throat> if you look at this that's what's going on. You'll notice that this thing is populated with, um, I gotta refresh that this thing is populated with those gardens that exist and if I want to see the gardens and all the data about them I can click on this and it does an Ajax call to the API asking for the list of all the garden values, all the garden rows if you will and with that I can then display it in such a way that you can kind of understand it. In a real deal you would put it in a table and you'd have some headers and so forth but I know that that's the garden ID, the parent ID, main the, the width, the length, and the X position and Y position. That's the, I, I know that. So my goal now is to be able to add a new one. So let's take a look at the tomato garden here. I might want to have different kinds of tomatoes. And so I'm going to create a new garden that's a garden within the tomato garden and it's going to be called Romas or Roma tomatoes, if you will. And it's going to be 12 feet wide, and it's going to have a length of, notice that this is um, 12 feet wide by 10 feet long. So I'm going to let the Romas be 3 feet of that. And I'm going to put them at position 0, 0 within the tomato garden. So the expectation is that when I click insert, it's going to show me that the parent garden is number 8. So click on insert and you can see that the parent garden is in fact number eight and it got that by the number that's sitting back behind this main string or the string that was here actually it said tomatoes at the time it said uh, garden eight which said tomatoes it's reloaded this now 
Um, so that, that's why that has changed. So as you can see now, this doesn't show my uh, rectangle garden that is uh, filled with romas. If I look at the down arrow here though, that thing does have them. And the reason is because I don't automate the, the update of this table. But if I click on show gardens, now you can see that that's there. We can also go to workbench and look and see this after we refresh this table that it's also in there as we would expect. So the Roma tomatoes are within the garden number eight, which is the tomato garden. And it's 12 feet by three feet and it's at the lower left corner of the tomato garden. That's what all that means. But we don't really care about gardening so much in this particular video, but we do care about um, the uh, code that allows us to make all of that happen. <clears throat> so the first thing I want to talk about is the business of how this thing got populated. When I, I mean, at, at when, when it loads up, it's populated. You can see this, it's got all of those guys in there. And there's just not much of a trick to doing that. Let's take a look at some code. If we look at the HTML, you can see that I have this parent ID select tag or select control if you want to think of it that way. Its name is parent, ID is parent, and I need to load that thing before I do anything else. That's the purpose of doing this on load in the body of the, of the page. So let's go take a look at on load. That's going to be here in ajaxgarden.js. And right here at the top, you'll see the onload method. And in there, we simply call get gardens. And I've got a method down here called get gardens, which we'll take a look at. But its job is to go retrieve all of the gardens and return them uh, to the uh, to the the uh, age or to the JavaScript that made the call. We'll talk about what false means uh, later. So, if we were to um, go look at get gardens you will notice that it's got three pieces it's got this piece called get gardens it's got a piece called ajax gardens or ajax get gardens and it's got another one called callback and so what i want to do is look at those three pieces independently uh, of the rest of the application they're all linked together but i want to look at them individually i should have said and uh, show you what these guys do the first part is that in get gardens I call this method called Ajax get gardens that's this one down here and its job is to establish a, an Ajax connection if you will uh, it's not really a connection but a, an Ajax um, yeah I guess you can call it a connection to the to the API and it says here that you want to call get gardens um, as the method that is in the API that's going to take care of our request. We'll talk about that later as well, the async part. So let's go down here and look at Ajax get gardens. Ajax get gardens, as it says here, makes an Ajax post to the shady API method named in the parameter method. So whatever method is, has its name there, that's the one that's going to get executed when it makes the Ajax call. And this is all it takes to make that happen. Dollar sign is from jQuery. So this says use the jQuery Ajax method and send these values into it or post these, these values into it so that, uh, um, so, so that it'll know what to do. Actually, not, we're not going to post those guys. We're simply going to post this data to the page. So to get gardens, all we need to do is just simply say get everything out of the rectangle gardens table, which if, if you'll recall is right here. I just want all of that stuff right there. And as a result, I'm going to do it by simply sending the name of the method that's in the shady API uh, PHP file that knows how to do that. And it's going to go get that stuff and it's going to send it back to us. Now, as you know, AJAX is the, an acronym for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. And we don't even use XML in this, in this application. We use JSON. But 
in any case, Ajax is named for that. And the A part is an important part. And it actually has something to do with this piece over here. But A being asynchronous means that we're going to make the call, but we're not going to wait for it to come back. And when you do that, you have to provide it some information about where you're going to uh, where you're going to call when it gets the information back. That's done right here. It says we've got this Ajax object that is returned from here. And so that's what this guy is. And it says when the Ajax object notifies that it's done or knows that it's done, it needs to call that method. That's the purpose for this method right here, get gardens callback. And in this particular case, there's not a whole lot going on. A lot of comments, but that's about it. But this will give you the sense for everything you need to know about how this box is working. Where it, where we click on one thing, click on cukes, and when we do the insert, we end up with three in there instead of cukes as the uh, main garden or as the parent garden. And you'll see here that was name. There's the three that goes with the cukes garden. Okay. So that's what this piece is going to show us. What it amounts to is this. When we get this call to the callback function, it sends us the response that the Ajax call is making back to the JavaScript. And as a result, we want to deal with that. And we have control about what that is, complete control about what's in this response. And you'll see that in a few minutes. So the idea is that this response is the JSON parsed version of this response because over on the other side we in, uh, we encoded it into JSON and here we're going to parse it out of the JSON. So we've got this response value or it, it's response encoded or it's JSON encoded and we'll come back. Uh, we'll parse it and we'll put the result in here. One of the things that's in there is a thing called gardens and you'll see exactly how that was created on the other side and so we're going to go get that and what's in there actually is an array a list of gardens and what we're going to do is we're going to extract that list of garden objects and use it to uh, populate that box right there so with that in mind we first check to see if if that it was successful and if it wasn't we're going to do this thing we're just simply going to say that the, the the process failed but if it was successful what we want to do is we want to put those values populate those values into the pound parent let me show you that quickly the pound parent select and that's in the HTML file so that we that we've run to get to here so now when we look at that, this says find the options and remove them. In other words, we want to start out with a clean slate in the parent uh, select tag. Now, what we want to do is march down through each of these garden objects and we want to do something with each one. And in particular, we want to put two values in the the select box. One is the string that is going to be displayed, for example, in this case, main or cukes or the girls or whatever. And the other is the, the value that is going to be um, used as the underlying value, the value that we get back when we do a selection. So when you see this, you'll see that what we have is um, the dot each from Java query on the gardens. And for each one of those, we want to execute this function. And what's the function do? It's got an argument key and an argument value. And that's the predefined for us, but we have to put that in there to say, I want those two things. And here we've got for this pound parent object, which is in fact the select, I want to append an option. This is all jQuery stuff going on here. And the values that I want to deal with are a value and the text because that's those are the values that are defined for these options. So the value is going to be value of zero, 
which, and I know I'm flipping around a lot, but I'm trying to do it slowly. But why do I say value of zero? Because the thing I want as the value that will be selected, in other words, the number for the ID, is whatever garden I picked, I want that number over here in the ID column. And this is column zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And that's all there is to that. So when I look back at this code, I want the value that I use for returning a value selected uh, to be value of zero, value being the whole row from the um, gardens table. And then text, I want to be value two, because I want that to be the name of the garden that I've selected. And again, if we look over here, you can see that this is zero, that's one, that's two. So I'm gonna get the name of the garden as the text and the number or the ID of the garden as the, um, as the value that we select. And I'll show you exactly how we can go about deciding how to deal with that, how, how, to, how to pick the thing that we want here. So with that in mind, you can see um, how we've set this up and you see how it works we pick a value here. We'll put this in the unused portion. Now let's put it in the potatoes portion. And we're going to do width of 12, length of three, because the potatoes portion is 12 feet wide and six feet long. So I'm gonna take half of it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put white potatoes in there. And I'll put those at position zero, zero within the table. I'm going to click on insert and now I've got white potatoes in garden seven which is the potatoes garden exactly what I'd hoped for and in fact if I go here I can see that that's exactly what I got too so now I've got white potatoes in there this is the one that I created just quickly on the fly I'm going to delete that one when you do that don't forget to do the apply in workbench because it'll keep showing up if you don't and you don't want that to happen. It'll confuse you. So that's the end of the first part of this. There'll be another part that describes more of the code and those pieces that it takes to make this, to pull this whole thing off. I hope that was useful to you. I look forward to uh, talking to you soon again.